Team Kesteva, welcome back to the auditorium. Today we have a PE example problem. We're getting back into weld design, and this time we're looking at designing welds for twisting loads. So, we will be referencing the ASCE 716. That's not what this is. We will be referencing the AISC steel manual, um, but very quickly, so don't worry about it. If you don't have it handy today, you'll make it through just fine. Make sure to promise the like button that you're gonna save them a seat in today's lecture, but then when they get here, have them realize that this class is jam-packed in the auditorium. And if you love all things engineering, consider subscribing to the channel. Every single one of you helps, and it helps grow the channel, and it helps reach more aspiring engineers out there in the world. All right, let's jump into today's problem. So we already have our diagram sketched. We have a plate, that's this guy right here, and that plate is welded to some type of other steel object. We don't really care what it is. Let's assume maybe it's a column. Um, we have two forces that are being applied to that plate. You have a 40 kip downward reaction and a 10 kip lateral reaction, um, both in blue and green. We need to efficiently size the weld in order to resist those loads. Um, shown here. So first things first, what you're going to need to do with twisting loads is uh, you're going to need to find your center of gravity of the weld. And what we're going to be doing today is treating the weld uh, like a line. So we're going to be uh, eliminating one of the dimensions of the, uh, of the weld, particularly the throat uh, dimension of the weld is going to be taken away. It's just going to be given a unit factor of one across the board which means that all of our units as we move through this problem are gonna be missing one unit. So it may seem a little confusing at first, but I've talked about this in some previous other videos, so go back over there and check out those. Uh, I go a little more in depth about that, but today you all know we're designing the welds as a line. So let's find that center of gravity. And the most important value that we wanna find is actually your X bar. So that is what I'm defining as so that. X bar is gonna equal 12, because now it's, that is the area of your weld, um, which is just a line. So 12 is representing your vertical component of your weld. And we're taking this X bar about uh, point A, we'll call it. So 12, and then it's distance along the X axis. So along this direction, X axis, starting from point A to the center point, of the uh, of that portion of weld is just zero because it's in line with point a plus eight because that's the area of the next weld we'll call that uh this one at the top distance on the x-axis to point a is just eight divided by two which is four and then we have two of those the bottom one is eight as well and the distance is still four Divide all of that by the total area of your weld, which is 8 plus 8 plus 12. X bar is going to equal 2.286 inches. Y bar is easy um, because it's symmetric in that direction, so it's literally just going to equal half of 12, which is 6 inches. So that part's easy. So that center of gravity is 2.286 inches from point A on the X axis, and then 6 inches up on the Y axis from point A. All right, great. Let's keep those in the back pocket. We're gonna use them later. Next, let's find shear in the horizontal direction. So we know our value is 10 kips. We'll go green here. Vx equals 10 kips, as we showed above. And we wanna break everything down into a kip per inch demand. So 10 kips, call it F sub Vx, because that's shear in the x direction, is equal to V sub X over A, again, A is the area of your weld, but in this case, it's just treated as a line, just 10 kips, divided by the total area of your weld or length of your weld, which is eight plus eight plus 12, which is 28 inches. That equals 0 0.357 kips per inch. Next, we want our vertical shear component. If we scroll back up here, Go red, that's our 40 kip reaction. And we're gonna go blue to stay consistent. So V sub Y is what I'm calling it, is 40 kips. So F V Y equals V Y over A. That just breaks down to 40 kips. This is easy, right? We're flying over 28 inches. 
that equals 1.429 kit per inch. So there's both of our shear forces. Well, now we have our actual twisting demand, which in this case, we're gonna be calling uh, a moment from now on. So moment M, which is going to equal 40 kips. So that's the vertical component times its moment arm, and the moment arm, if we scroll up here, is the distance to the center of gravity. So you have that E vertical, and then you have that E um, horizontal. Okay, so two different eccentricities, two different demands, which equal two different moments, but we need to lump them together into one moment acting on the weld. Whew. Go back down. So 40, and it's gonna be 16 inches minus um, 2.286 inches. And remember, that was our X bar component. So if we're gonna scroll up again, you will see we have eight and eight is 16 inches. That gets us back to this point, but we need to subtract out our X bar in order to get that distance. Then we're gonna say plus 10K, which is our horizontal force, times six inches. And again, that's Y bar, and that one's easy. All that spits out to 609 kip inch. Next, we need to find our polar moment of inertia, I sub P. So I sub P is equal to I X plus I Y. Or we can cross that out and we can find J W, and I am gonna be referencing the design of welded structures, um, that blue hardcover that I, again, even though it's an older book, I suggest you all get it. It's a great source of material. Um, and we actually have equations for this type of weld geometry to get you your polar moment of inertia without having to go through finding I sub X and I sub Y. Um, it's just one quick equation based on the geometry of your weld. So I'm gonna be plugging that in here. So from the design of welded structures table, J sub W for this type of geometry equals the following equation. And our weld, again, looks like that. That dimension is B, that dimension is D. So that's what's going on here. We plug all that in, J sub W equals 915 inches cubed. Now, we need to find our kips per inch of demand because of this moment. And it's, it's two directional at the moment, right? You have an X component and you have a Y component. So we're gonna be breaking those up. So F sub MX is gonna be equal to the equation MCY over JW, 609 kip inch. C sub Y, well, what is C sub Y? If we scroll back to the top, we need to be taking points about this location right here, which we'll call, I don't know, O, because that is the location of uh, the extreme stresses in this type of pattern. Um, and for us, we need to find the distance. We got a lot going on here. So I'm gonna go black and we need to find from the center of gravity to point O and from the center of gravity to point O. And C sub Y is that and C sub X is that, okay? I know, we got a lot stacking up here. Now, C sub Y is just six inches. And then divide all that by JW, which is 915 inches cubed. That is gonna get us four kips per inch. Now, we need to find the other component of our moment. FM sub Y equals MC sub X over JW. Again, 609. This time it's gonna be eight inches minus X bar over 915. And you might be saying eight inches minus X bar. Let's go up, because again, C sub X. So it's gonna be the total eight inches right here. And then you need to subtract out X bar in order to get C sub X. That's gonna equal 3.8 kips per inch. So now we have all of our demands broken down into a force per unit length, which is great, which we have kips per inch. And you might be thinking, well, does that mean we're done? Well, no, now we need to compile them 
So, fx is the summation of all of the different demands in their, in their different forms um, being summed together. So 0 0.357 kit per inch plus 4 kit per inch going to equal 4.357 kips per inch. And then F sub y, everything in the y direction, is going to be 1.429 kips per inch plus 3.8 kips per inch. That's going to be 5.23 kips per inch. And you're like, are we done? We're not done. Now we have this action going on. So we have, and we need to get the resultant. We get the resultant, F sub r, the square root of both those numbers. That dumps out to 6.8 kips per inch for demand, for the critical demand on your weld. Now we need to size our weld from the steel manual. Um, and we're gonna run this in assuming that everything was, was allowable. All right, so ASD is what we're gonna run this today. Should have mentioned that sooner. Um, so RN over omega equals 0 0.928, assuming 70 uh, KSI electrodes, times D is gonna be the capacity per 16th of weld that you use. So what we do with that is just say, we have a demand of 6.8 kips per inch, that equals 0 0.928 times D. D, after dividing, just gets you 7.33 inches. That you need to round up, which is gonna get you eight sixteenths. You know, I shouldn't put that as inches. Although, I mean, it is inches, it's just over sixteenths, you know? Um, gets you eight sixteenths for a weld size, but we don't call it out like that. We call out a half inch weld, and it's gonna be a fillet weld. Now, granted, that is a massive weld, which would take multiple passes to complete, so not the most efficient system. So hopefully there might be something that we could change about maybe the geometry of the plate or uh, sharpen the pencil on the loading that's gonna be applied to that plate. But for now, in this problem, that's what it's gonna take in order to uh, meet the design criteria. Before you leave, if you like today's content, consider subscribing to the channel as always. I know I said we're packed in the auditorium, but there's always room for one more. And if there's somebody that you know that would like this information or think this information would be helpful for, reach out to them, let them know about the channel. Uh, this is Rich with Team Kesteva, and I will see everybody next time. Later.